James Vince from mrtelephone.co.uk. Old school, it's been a while since I've said that, but the reason is because I'm trying to fix up a telephone. Now, for those of you that don't know, I used to work for British Telecom, and then I set myself up as Mr. Telephone, working and also selling telecom items. Now, uh, we never used to work on actual telephones because really they're just more disposable items that you would just buy. You're not gonna pay for somebody's time to fix them. Uh, years ago you would have, but not in the day when I was there. But I bought this one off eBay. So really I'm not gonna have any more experience than just the average person working on actual telephones. But I do remember lots of people used to move house and then they would report their phone not working. And what they used to do is, when you're moving house, you pull all the cables out, and a lot of them used to separate the cable completely. Then when they go to plug their phone back in, they'd use a different cable. And I know in the UK, a plug that goes into the telephone, it works on the inner two pins, but sometimes, rarely, it can work on the outer two pins. And then the customer would just plug in a lead that fits, but of course, the signal from the telephone exchange was coming down the inner two pins, and yet their telephone was looking for voltage on the outer two pins. So I'm wondering if that's what's wrong with this one here. So in here, we should have a swatch phone. Now I've never uh, seen these before. Back in the, would it have been the 80s? Yeah, back in the, yeah, back in the 80s, I had a swatch watch. They were very popular back then. And uh, they were cheap, you know, they weren't expensive. They were kind of a throwaway watch. Last for many years, you couldn't service them or anything like that. But uh, yeah, a Swatch Twin Phone. So I thought that was quite interesting. And it's definitely the same Swatch, same brand that does the, uh, that does the watches. Look at that suit. Wolf of Wall Street, look at that. And remember, they're not trying to look vintage there. That's what it would have been like. Right, let's uh, open it up and see if we can fix it. So I got it on eBay for £12.50, that was the best offer, and £4.20 postage. So £16.70 in total, and it just says not working. Some nice little uh, pictures of it there. So let's take it apart and see if we can get this running again. Oh look, twin feature. You can talk and listen not only with the handset, but also the bass. So that's just going to be like speakerphone, isn't it? Yeah, tone or pulse dialing. Pulse dialing, I think it's... Is it Virgin Media now? They're not supporting pulse anymore. I've kind of... Uh, I've gone away from it now. But pulse dialing was when you used to... The same as doing the uh, receiver on and off. So for example, if you wanted to dial the speaking clock, you could do one, one, two, one, two, three. And when it comes to zero, you can just hit it 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's the same as putting pulses down the telephone line. So people years ago used to think that that was like a hack that you could get free phone calls. It wasn't at all. It was just a way of instead of uh, doing the dial and that putting the pulses down the line, you could do it like that. And it actually works pretty good. Well, you know what I was thinking? I was thinking maybe they put the wrong lead in, but look, unless this is the wrong one, which it is possible, that looks like it is the lead for here. Look, that's the same colour. That's definitely the original lead. So uh, I hope it's not just a case of them plugging it in wrong. No, it's not going to be here because this is uh, RJ11 here, and this one is the smaller one, RJ10, I think. There we go. So nice. How does that hang up? Oh, sorry. That's the one there. Yeah, that's just that. That must be just a turn up. What that is that? Just a turn it on. Not really sure what that's going to be for there. There we go, so the pulse dialing would be done with that. Okay, before we even plug it into the telephone line, we should be able to just check this for continuity, and then we'll know whether there's a problem with this or not, because we can see in here that it's definitely using the inner two pins, because if we zoom right in, you can see there's only two contacts in here. So it has to be using the middle two pins. So we now need to see uh, continuity be between pins two and five on here, because that's what the socket is using, pins two and five. Now, 
There's only four pins on here, but it is actually a six, it is actually a six pin socket, but they're only really populated it with four pins because pins one and six are not being used. So basically we want to see if there's any continuity between the outer two pins here and the middle two pins here. It makes it a lot easier here because you see the other wires are not populated there anyway. All right, so let's go on to the outer one here and here. Right, that's working there. And let's go to here. Yay, brilliant, it's working, that's good. So that means it's a problem with the actual phone. Now, I haven't got my analog meter, but if I was to go to ohms, let's see if we take it off the hook, let's see if it's gonna register anything, because normally, with the BT meters years ago, you put it onto ohms and you would just lift up the handset and you could see the analog needle go across. Let's see if it's gonna do anything on here. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah. Right, well that says to me that that part there is being recognized. Let me plug this into the landline. I'll be very disappointed if this is working. Almost heartbroken. Oh wow, this is one interesting little product. So uh, yeah, it looks like the fault is that it's not ringing. So if I ring it in from my mobile, so I'm ringing it now, you will see that it's lighting up here. It looks like there's another light here which isn't doing, oh wait, that is doing something. Oh, it is, yeah, that is working. But look. It's not making any difference. Yeah, that's probably, if you can hear anything, it's my phone ringing in the background. So, it's not ringing in. We have what looks like a mute button here. Uh, interestingly enough, underneath here, we have the difference to go between pulse dialing and tone dialing. It's a really nicely made phone, and I understand now what twin phone means. So here we have a little thing that goes from tone to pulse. And this hasn't even been filled in. Do you know what? This is in a very good condition. But watch this. Let me just hang up. I've probably given it away now. So I thought it was just a speakerphone thing. It's not. Have a listen here. So let me put that one down. Hopefully you will be able to hear dial tone. But now we can pick this one up and use this as a handset as well. Can you hear dial tone there? And then we can hang this one up, but we still have dial tone here. We can only hang up when we hang up both of them. So the idea is that, I've watched an advert on it. The idea is that it shows two women, two sisters or something, uh, try and their boys on the other side only have one phone between them. And in the proper 80s fashion, they're in shirt and tie and fighting each other to get to the phone. And then the other two just speaking nice and calmly on the settee. One on this one here, one on this one here. How funny is that? What a weird idea. Never heard of that before, never seen it before. And I've seen quite a few telephones, so I think that's really interesting. Is it as good as speakerphone? Well, really, speakerphone, you don't need it then because you can have four or five people in the room using speakerphone or however many people in the room using speakerphone. But where this one differs is it would still be a private conversation. So on speakerphone, everybody gets to hear what the other party's saying. Well, with this one, you could be on this one somebody else could be on this one right next to you and then you see only you two can hear what the person on the other side is saying so how interesting is that so we need to take it apart and we need to find out why it's not ringing i think it's going to be something to do with this switch down here mind you that's i can hear something rattling as well uh, that switch looks like it's a volume switch but maybe the very bottom one is completely off do you know what I mean? Maybe one of them is off if you don't want to be disturbed. But I can't see any other switch on here to turn the phone off. And if you're wondering if the microphone works, what I used to do is I used to blow into here. And because, do you remember on mobile phones to begin with anyway, people always used to shout in them. It's because without really thinking about it, when you use a landline telephone, you can hear what you're saying ever so slightly through here. So there's something in the circuitry where you can hear what you're saying through here so you don't shout. Well, on a mobile phone at the beginning, I believe that wasn't the case. So that's why people were shouting into their mobile phones. So if you blow in here, you will hear it coming out of here. So, so if I hold the earpiece up to here and blow through here, 
So I now know that that microphone's definitely working. And on this one here, again, if I blow into, it must be here. Yeah, I know it's because I've had it on, uh, uh, off the hook for too long. But so I know the microphone's working. Well, out of everything, I'm thinking that that's going to be the uh, for the uh, for the buzzer, the ringer. Right, we've got two screws here. We've got another couple off. They just look like rubber bungs there. Let's see if there's anything hidden in here. Yes, little screw there. That's interesting. There's a little flap there. Why would you need a flap there? Looks like it was going to take a cell battery, like a CR. Do you know what? I wonder if there's another model where you can store numbers or something on it. That looks like it's one of those CR 2032s or 2025s. Yeah, I bet that was for a different model. That doesn't do anything there, does it? Well, let's undo these two screws and see what happens. So while I'm working on this, let's give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive, which this month is kitdigital.com. Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, having fun repairs. Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Dorian from Hoover Lux Restorations, Felipe at MrKeebs.com, Dan Prosson, King Curd from Loadbook Auto Sales, and DJVG. Right, I can see, already see it's broken down here. Oh, everything's falling out. Maybe the plastic's starting to get a bit brittle. Right, so we need to test these switches. So I need to get this board out so I can get to the underneath of these switches here. Right, hold on. I think it comes off this way. I can see we have a broken wire here on the speaker. But if that was me now, or whether that's the fault. Oh, it's one of those uh, piezo piezo buzzers, isn't it? Well, I hope I can solder that back on. Uh, what have we got here? That's the microphone. Switches. Well, I'll get my soldering iron on and we can measure the switches while that's heating up. So they are here and here. Let's just do both of them and see if they're working okay. So meter into continuity. Right, so in the top position, it goes between here and here. Now let's move it down the middle position. It's no longer there. It goes from there and there, so that's working. And there must be from here to here. Yeah, so they're working in all the positions. So that's definitely working. Let's try this one here. It must be the same setup. So from here to here. Yeah, let's move it down one. Yeah, and down to the last one is not in use. Ooh, okay. Well, hold on. What? What's that's the bell ringing one? Why is that last one not in use? Is it because you only need two settings and it's automatically the other setting? Because we've only got two settings here now, haven't we? Because look, can you see these are not soldered in? And they're not supposed to be. There's no tracks going to them. So we've only actually got two settings on this switch. That one. There. 
and the top one. Yeah, so by default it must be the lowest it must be the lowest ring by default. I think it looks okay. I think it might be just the fact that the uh, the wire's not on the buzzer, unless of course I did that because the wires are very tight when I took it apart. Right now, this is going to be a little bit awkward trying to solder onto this. Let's see if I can get it into the same the same position, or will I have to go? Will, no, I'll have to go onto a new position on here, won't I? Because now that part's going to be the same as that. Does that mean this is going to be in contact with that now? No. So there must be a divide in between here. I don't think I'm going to go onto the same. I think I'm going to go onto a new, a new patch. Right. Let's see what happens. Let's try to get a little bit of solder on the middle bit to begin with. I'll do it just below here. I think this might be a job for flux, so let's uh, put some on there and see if it's going to stick now. No, it's not sticking to it. Let me go into the old position. Right, it's stuck to the old position. But it needs does it not need to be on this weird material? Well, I suppose we could try, couldn't we? If it works and I don't have to stress about it. It's just that that looked like it wasn't uh, it was no longer connecting. Unless what I could do is maybe I could spread that that's I've got an idea. I could spread this solder all around here. Now that that's stuck to there, if I was to spread this over here, make it bigger if possible. There you go, that's stuck over here. Now it's going to be making a contact with that, isn't it? Because I've got a little tail on it. Yeah, I can see the old bit that came off here. The old bit of the uh, weird coating, whatever it is. Is that going to work or not? All right, let's see now if it is going to ring. So I've got my mobile phone just out of shot, and I'm just going to ring. No. Oh, annoying. Ah, uh, that's annoying. Right, is it because I soldered onto the old bit there, possibly? Do you know what? I'm going to Google how to solder a wire onto a piezo speaker. I've done it before in the past and the solder just stuck to it. But maybe this one's slightly different. It looks kind of ceramic-y. You know, that coating looks like it doesn't look like something you can solder onto. Uh, yeah, let's take it apart again. I was sure that was going to work. Right, uh, I am going to put a bigger tip on my solder nine. It's cool down now. I've looked up. I mean, when you know what you're doing, they make it look simple. But I think... I read that you have to have the temperature lower, so I'm going to put a bigger tip on my iron and have the temperature lower on my iron. I think I'm going to put it to about 380 degrees Celsius and see if that works any better. Because last time I did it at 480. I'll tell you what, let's do it at 350 and see if that will work. Actually, I wonder, would I get an ohms reading testing into 
the buzzer because that would save me having to keep putting it back together to take it over to plug it into the line. Let's see where the wires go to. Right, they go to here. Let's see if we have, because we know it's not working. Unless, of course, there's a different fault. I could have done that when I took this apart. Ah, now that's worrying, isn't it? But would it give me a one ohm? I mean, that's a short. Is the problem that I've gone right through this onto this layer here, because this is on the other side, this is one piece on the other side, isn't it? It's this kind of coating on the top. Have I burnt right the way through it, so I'm not on the coating, I'm down on the thing, that's what's happened. I'm on, I'm on it underneath, so basically it's a, it's, it's, it's a short. Yeah, okay. So what I need to do is unsolder that. Now, do I need to clean that or is it not going to make a difference? Maybe I need to clean that up. I'm going to use some bigger wick. Cleaned it from there, but look, by doing this now, I have actually put a nice bit of solder on there. Maybe I could just use a bit of flux and tap it onto the little mess that I've just made here. It's going to be more in the middle of the speaker. It might work. Look at that, it's not, uh, oh sorry, news in my mind, I was going to say the solder hasn't melted, it's flux. <laughs> there you go. Right, let's see now what sort of reading that's given me. Now that's more like it, isn't it? It's given me something, but it's not a short. Maybe that's going to be enough. I'm going to gently clean it again. Get rid of the flux. Just cleaning with IPA. Yeah, that's on there. If it works, I think I am going to uh, put a dot of, I think really I need a dot of glue on that. Do you know what? I'm going to put a dot, on glue, a dot of glue on it right now because I don't want to keep undoing these screws going into the plastic because eventually that's going to fail. So I've just got a little bit of the hot glue stick here and I've just cut a little bit off. I'm going to put it on here. And let me get my hot air and just go to, it's on 159 Celsius, I'll just leave it at that. Well, I'll let that cool and then we'll try it again. Right, there's no screws in it this time. Let's see what it's going to do. I think it's going to work because I think beforehand it was shorting. Here goes, 
Ring in there. Now. Come on. Oh! I forgot to plug it in. One second. I had my other one, uh, <laughs> my uh, main phone plugged in. Right, here we go. Ring it again. Come on now. Yes! There we go. Fantastic. Result. Right, I'm going to get the screws back in it and then we can finish up this video. I've just given it a little wipe over, especially the lead here was uh, quite dirty. In, in, in there and here. Got dial tone. Yeah, and it's working on tone as well. Right, let's give it a ring and let's see the different ringtones on it. Right, so that's the loudest. Oh, that's loud. Oh, excellent. Right, I think that's probably the best one. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Yeah, very nice. What an interesting little product there. So how did I fix it? It was just uh, the little uh, piezo buzzer there, or piezo, some people say. Uh, how I managed to get the solder on, in, unfortunately for me, this time was just luck. I was using the braid to take the solder off the last attempt, and a bit of solder just stuck to it. So I, I don't really know what I did wrong originally. Well, I suppose what I did wrong originally, I tried to go onto the old position, and it shorted. But when I was trying to go onto the the uh, before that when I was trying to go on to the kind of white powdery stuff it wasn't sticking whatsoever so I think I might have had the iron too hot when I lower down my iron and use the braid I suppose by using the braid a lot of the heat's dispersing and it probably lowers the temperature even more as well so maybe that's the secret I won't know until I have to solder one up again in the future but there we go not necessarily a very interesting fix but in this instance I think a very interesting product there the very fact that you can use both of them as a telephone. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not something I've ever seen before. I'm not sure whether there's really any need for it. It's just more of a gimmick. But I could imagine, I don't know, I could imagine that that would appeal to uh, to some people. Yeah, I think, it's a, I think it's a nice product and it's kind of styly, just the fact that it's swatch. I think it's uh, it's a, it's an unusual item. I could see how that would be quite collectible. So that is it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and hopefully we can do another Trying to Fix video very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Summertime, summertime, love's in its prime. Summertime, summertime, everything's just fine.